So, after watching Justice League Part 1 and Justice League Part 2, I finally got to Justice League Part 3, otherwise known as The Boys. I binged both Seasons 1 and 2 over a week, and I have to say, I really liked them both. Going into this, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that it had superheroes, and... Well, that was basically it. Superheroes alone can usually pull me into a show or a movie, but lately, I've started to get a bit desensitized to superhero media. There's just so much nowadays, and so many of them are the same, that they're not super fun or original anymore. But boy howdy does this show shake things up a bit. This show essentially turns every quote-unquote superhero, also known as a soup, into a corrupt celebrity asshole. And then you have the boys, the group of guys and a girl who look to expose the seven, a group of the most powerful soups, and take down Vought, the company that promotes these fake celebrity assholes as heroes for their own personal gain and profit. And if this sounds familiar, that's the point. This show has a lot of social commentary that can be applied to everyday life, and includes stuff like the Me Too movement, radicalization, through mass media, racial profiling. Hell, they even put in a send her back chant. This show actually kind of depressed me because all these things hit a little too close to home. I feel like if superheroes really did exist, this show would be the closest thing to what the world would be like, or at least what America would be like. I know everybody likes the big, flashy MCU stuff where Iron Man sends a missile into outer space through a portal and saves the day, but chances are, from a realism standpoint, that shit would never happen and really only exists to entertain and wow audiences. I much prefer superhero media like this because while it is extremely dark and depressing and violent, it's a much more realistic depiction of what superheroes in the real world would look like. These shows aren't made to excite audiences, they're made to show the honest brutal, violent reality of what it would be like to deal with superpowered beings. It's not showy or flashy, it's usually going to be violent and scary and horrible to watch. And I love that. However, for as dark as this show is, I hate the seemingly recurring theme of any sort of dark media needing to be completely desaturated to let the audience know how dark the show or movie is. I get that it helps add to the general tone, but I have seen way too many things at this point incorporate this method of turning everything brown and gray and blue to show how dark a show or movie is. But despite that, this show actually has moments of black comedy, and some scenes that are just legitimately hilarious, like Translucent's tribute show. <laughs> and this scene of A-Train being picked over the deep to be welcomed back into the seven. Peace out, bitch! I'll get into this a little more later though. But now that we got the basic premise, tone, and themes down, I feel like we should dive into the story, because this story is so good. Well, mostly. The way it starts immediately hooks you in, with A-Train running through Huey's girlfriend Robin and disintegrating her. I really like the escalation of events in Season 1, with Huey joining the boys to get revenge on the soups, to the boys spending an entire episode trying to figure out how they were going to kill one of the seven in Translucent, to Translucent leading them to A-Train's girlfriend Popclaw before his bits are blown to bits. It's all done really well, and it ensures that the audience stays engaged the entire time. You really feel like you're thrust from one crazy situation to the next, and all the while, you have some really good character work. Each character feels like they have their own role to play in the series, and you really come to understand who each person is. I loved Huey and Annie realizing that the soups weren't as great as they seemed, and you can see them slowly start to lose their innocence and naivety because of that. I love the soups showing their true colors, particularly the leader of the Seven, Homelander. I think it bears repeating that Antony Starr really kills it as Homelander. I've always really liked myself a good villain, and who boy, he's just so good as this series' villain. He's pretty much what an evil, corrupt Superman would be like, and I love that. I think a lot of people were curious what a show or movie could do with an evil Superman character, myself included. Not just somebody who is a complete asshole, but somebody who nobody can actually stand a chance against fighting. He's not just an asshole, he's a powerful asshole. You can't stand up to him because you'd get murked by him if you do, and that sort of helplessness can really make you hate a guy. That plane scene is by far my favorite scene of Homelander. I mean, there are others, but they're not very 
good. Antony just plays his part so well. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have William Billy Butcher. <laughs> Sorry, I just... I can't call him Billy with a straight face. Billy's just one of those names that I always felt had a little kid connotation to it. So to have this badass swears like a sailor guy be named Billy, I'm sorry, I just can't take it seriously. But I love the characterization that's given to him. You really get to see his motivations and where his hatred of soups comes from. You get to see how his obsession with sticking it to the soups puts him at odds with his own friends. And despite being Homelander's arch enemy, I think it's fair to say that in some ways he parallels Homelander, which is brought up by Annie in season two. In a lot of ways, Homelander and Butcher are two sides of the same coin. And I love how that dynamic shapes the conflict between the two. Even the more minor characters get good characterization. You get glimpses into M.M., Frenchie, and Kamiko's past lives. You get to see their relationships and how their loved ones motivate them. You also get to see each member of the Seven realize that working for Vought isn't all that it's cracked up to be, and with the exception of maybe like Black Noir, they slowly start to rebel against the corporation. All the characters, from the heroes to the villains, are just fleshed out so well that they really add to the story. And the story ending with the boys group fractured and home Lander finding out the truth about his relationship with Butcher's wife before murdering Stillwell for lying out of fear and revealing to Butcher that his wife Becca had been raising his child since she went missing. It's just such a good cliffhanger ending to season one. So yeah, I'd say season one was a 9 out of 10. And now we move on to season two, and this is where I believe the cracks in this show start to show. Mainly because this season feels a lot more disjointed and all over the place. There are like four or five storylines happening simultaneously, and while they do sort of intersect by the end, tonally, they also kind of conflict with one another. Particularly when it came to that Church of the Collective stuff, because I know that stuff and The Deep are supposed to be like the comic relief of the show. I mean, for God's sakes, it has a scene of The Deep's gills singing to him, but it just felt very out of place to me. And then you also have the Queen Maeve slash Elena storyline, Butcher trying to get his wife out of her prison, Huey Annie and M.M. trying to find out more about Liberty, Frenchie and Kamiko dealing with Kenji and the aftermath of his death, Homelander and Stormfront attempting to get closer to Becca's son Ryan, and like I said, these things do end up intersecting by the end, but it does make things a lot messier because for the majority of the season, you're just jumping from one storyline to another. And I think that's partially because by this point, these characters are already so well established. I felt like season one was more the season of us getting to know each character, so now that we've established these characters and their relationships to one another, this season was where we started letting some of these characters go off on their own separate storylines. But of course, the downside to that is that it leads to the narrative of this season being a lot more unfocused. Another thing that I did not like in this season was the character of Huey. Now, this isn't really a jab at Jack Quaid because I think he does a great job as an actor. This is more of a jab solely at the character of Huey. See, I mentioned very briefly before that I liked the character development of Huey in the first season, but holy shit did he annoy the crap out of me in the second season, and it was too severe not to be mentioned. He goes from this guy who slowly gets more hardened with each of the horrible things that he has to do, to this overly ambitious, reckless, jealous, clingy, sniveling mess. I was seriously hating him more than any other character on the show. I know Homelander and Stormfront are really bad people, but to me, villains that are written well and can successfully do and say things to get the audience to hate them honestly doesn't make me mad, it makes me respect them for playing their part so well and doing what they're supposed to do as villains. But when there are characters that are not supposed to be hated and they end up having qualities that annoy the shit out of the audience, or I guess more specifically me, those characters are actually worse to me than the actual villains. It's kind of like Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars. Yeah, Jar Jar isn't technically a villain, but you ask anybody who they hate more, Jar Jar Binks or any of the actual villains in Star Wars, I bet you 99% of the time, people will say Jar Jar. 
And that's my main problem with Huey this season. He just annoys the shit out of me. He starts off the season by insisting to the boys that they don't need Butcher, even though it's painfully clear that they do, and then he tries to take over as leader even though he's nowhere near equipped to fill that role. And while he's doing that, he's putting the group in danger by communicating with his Vought-tracked superhero girlfriend, Annie. And while he's doing that, he's lying to Annie, even though she blatantly told him she doesn't want to be lied to. And then when Butcher comes back and gets more shit done in one episode than Huey has in the entire season, Huey actually has the nerve to get mad at him. Sure, they didn't leave on super great terms, but bitch, this man is the real leader and he's doing more to save your guys' asses than you've done in the whole season so far. And, and then, when he's not acting like a jealous little shit, he's crying and leaving poetic voicemails to Annie, his girlfriend that he keeps lying to and expects her to respond helpfully when he clearly hasn't been treating her well. And by the end of the third episode, when he's turned into a shell of his former self, I could not fucking stand him anymore. He does end up getting a little bit of my respect back from the third episode forward because he's not nearly as annoying and he has a good ending when he tells Annie that he's trying to stand on his own, but I could not get over how much I hated him at the beginning of the season by this point. However, one thing I did like was Stormfront. I liked how she almost fools the audience into believing that she's a pretty cool and almost rogue member of the Seven, but then turns out to be this racist Nazi, and I love how she compliments Homelander in that sense. Also, I really like the theme of female empowerment that permeates throughout this season, despite how hilariously fake it may seem at some points, which I think you could also argue is just a commentary on female empowerment in media and how it's shown, but having it culminate in the superpowered females kicking the crap out of Stormfront just felt so satisfying to watch. See, I like female empowerment scenes done like this because it's seamlessly integrated into the story instead of being awkwardly placed in the middle of a story just for the sake of it being there and attempting to manipulate the audience into thinking it's a genuine scene of female empowerment. Anyways, the finale to season 2 was definitely more exciting than season 1's and I'm really excited to see where the series goes next. And despite any problems I might have had with season 2, I still thought it was a good season overall, but it just wasn't as good as season 1. So I'm going to give season 2 an 8 out of 10.